feeling can be uncomfortable and painful and a lot of our worries come from our fear of failing in the future. At the same time, failing is unavoidable and the way we process our failure has implications for our self-esteem, our growth, our effort and motivation, our success at reaching our goals. So the question is not how can I avoid failure? The question is how can I become good at failing? Hey everyone and welcome to Becoming an Expert at Self-Leadership, a channel dedicated to personal growth and psychology. I'm Micah, a psychologist and here to share some ways you can adjust your perspective on failure so that it's more supportive of you and your life. It doesn't matter whether you have just experienced a setback or failure and you clicked on this video to get relief from that situation or find ways of coping with it, or if everything's going pretty well for you at the moment. It's always helpful to reflect about our mindset and our beliefs and attitudes around failure, because that will prepare you for the future. It'll help you heal wounds from failing in the past, and it'll quiet some of the worries that you have around failure at the present. Here are five ways to think about failure that are helpful and constructive. Number one, was it really a failure? If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I like to question the way things seem. So this is also where I'd like to start here. To question if what you are experiencing as a failure is really a complete failure. Often we think of things in black or white, all or nothing terms. Either it was a failure or it was a success. And since it wasn't a complete success, it must be a complete failure. This is something that psychologists call a cognitive distortion for all of you out there who like fancy words. This is when we blur, change, distort reality, the picture that we have of reality in our mind. And it's especially det detrimental if we distort it in a way that's not helpful. It's like when we look through a window that is shattered and then conclude the world is now shattered and made up of tiny little pieces. So was it really a complete complete failure? Or was it perhaps partially a failure and partially a success? One area of life we often see in these all or nothing terms are relationships, romantic relationships. As soon as a relationship or marriage ends, it's often labeled as a failure, a waste of time, and if we look closely, we will almost always find that there were also good things that came from that relationship, even though it ended. Another example, think of a child that's playing, constructing a tower with bricks. And at some point the tower collapses and the kid starts over. Was this collapse really a failure or is it just part of the play of the child? Is the child learning, playing, growing? Number two, focus on the process. What do they say? The climb or road is more important than the goal. What's great about this perspective is that it focuses on the process and acknowledges that before we can get somewhere, we need to go through a process. And that process requires effort and failing and effort and failing and so on. If you're not failing, it means you're not learning and growing because you already knew how to get there. And what's crucial is to be able to stay motivated. And this is only possible if we can accept failure as a natural part of our climb or road. To not see it as a sign that we should get, give up. 
but to see it as a sign that we are on our path. To see failures of the past as something that contributed to making you into the person you are now. And to see that failing doesn't mean you'll never get there. It just means you're not there yet and that you've experienced something that will give you information which can help you grow and learn. I recently read about a school in Chicago that renamed the grade F into not yet. And by that, they're supporting their students in remaining aware of the process, acknowledging the process. And that this process may sometimes, most likely always, at some point include a not yet. Research shows that people who think about failure like this actually feel energized when they fail. They think, oh great, I love a challenge instead of I might as well give up. So to summarize, failure is part of a process of reaching any goal. And it doesn't mean you will never get there. It just means you're not there yet. And seeing failure in this light makes it into an opportunity and is really empowering. Number three, maybe it's time to rethink this. Another thing failure prompts us to do is it makes us question our goals. What was or am I striving for? And do I still want to invest effort into that? How essential is this goal really? And are my expectations or standards perhaps too high? When we focus on goals that are out of our control, like the approval of another person, that is demotivating. And it's often a self-defense mechanism. And it would be a lot better for us to work on the underlying issue of our broken sense of self-worth than to continue aiming for that goal. It's not within your control if someone will approve of or even appreciate your work. So for example, instead of aiming at getting your coworker or team lead to like your idea, you could aim for coming up with an idea that is a great solution to a problem. You can't control whether someone will like your idea, not 100%, but what you can control is how much effort you put into developing an idea that is a great solution. Number four, it's not a catastrophe. Some very rare setbacks and failures are catastrophes, but most of our failures and setbacks are not, even though we may think they are. This comes from another cognitive distortion, tunnel vision of being overly focused on this one failure. And to step out of this tunnel vision, take a step back and look at everything that is going well despite of this or even including this failure? What are things that you're still good at even though you failed at this one behavior? What are things you can still continue doing even though this one thing went wrong? Often you will find that your life is pretty much the same and you can still do the same things you've been doing even though this one thing went wrong. Number five, Failure shows courage. This is my favorite one. Reminding yourself that failure shows courage. If you failed at something, it means you were brave. It means you put yourself out there. You stood up for something that is important to you. Instead of focusing on your worries and the things that you're dissatisfied with, you chose concrete action. The reason we don't reach our goals is not because we fail, but because we do not try. And you tried. That means you're on your way. A life of meaning, happiness, and contribution requires exactly this type of courage. The courage to 
risk failing so that you can try something that is more important than avoiding failure. A full life requires this type of vulnerability. So you tried. Worse than failing is not trying, and you tried, so on yourself for that. Which one of these reflections was your favorite? Let me know in the comments. And please also give this video a thumbs up. That way you can support me in getting these types of messages to as many people as possible. Subscribe if you're new here and you want to be sure to receive more nuggets from psychology like this one in your feed. Till next time, take care and remember it's not the failure that is demotivating, but the way we interpret it.